Okay, time is up. Here are the short answers to the questions of what those blocks are called and what they do. They are called tramming blocks, and they were used in combination with a tramming bar to precisely calibrate the vertical angle of a gun barrel with its mount. The reason this was important for all but the 20mm gun mounts is because all except for the 20s were aimed using remote directors that had to match in alignment. Machinists are familiar with the term because even though their tools don't look or work the same, they must tram or align the tiltable parts of machine tools, such as spindles on vertical mills, before they can make accurate cuts. In order to set a gun's vertical alignment, a tramming block was positioned on the gun slide facing down and another on the wall of the gun pit facing up. They were then aligned and spaced with one another using a tramming bar, which is a rod cut to a specific length. Once in place, they were permanently attached to their mounting points with welds. If there was ever any future doubt about barrel alignment, a gun crew could easily tram the gun by holding the tramming bar between the blocks, then move the barrel until the bar was snugly nested within the cavities of the two blocks. However, tramming the gun was just one of many steps required to align barrels and turrets so that they could be accurately aimed and fired. So that's the short answer. If you're interested and have a few minutes to spare, settle down in a chair with your favorite beverage and we'll take a deep dive that looks beyond tramming to see how it relates to the overall need and means of aligning guns and turrets for accuracy. This photo shows some 14-inch gun turrets being fabricated that were identical to those on Texas. When a turret was built, it was first assembled on a level factory shop floor. By using the floor as a reference, the turret structure was assembled and critical items such as the gun mounts and even the gun slide and barrel assembly could be aligned with great precision. To begin, the turret's roller path was aligned and assembled on the level floor. The path was ultimately attached to the ship's structural frame and acted as the lower bearing race for turret rollers that the turret rested and rotated on. The turret rollers that allowed rotation were then set on the path and pieces that created a cage for them was assembled. In this photo, the turret pan has been placed above the rollers on precisely leveled steel blocks. From that point, the pan became the critical reference since the rest of the turret structure was assembled on top of it. Plate steel bulkheads and the gun house deck were assembled within a circular exterior bulkhead to create a very rigid box structure on the turret pan. The plates were precisely aligned during assembly to assure a structure that was perfectly plumb and level. Extreme precision was required when installing the gun girders that acted as gun mount foundations. These were bolted to both the gun deck floor and thick vertical plates that formed gun well bulkheads within the structure. Even the slightest error would make it difficult to properly aim a gun or even elevate it smoothly. Precisely machined cast steel deck lugs were positioned and bolted on top of the girders and trunnion blocks were set on those. The blocks contained sockets and bearings that supported trunnions on the gun slide that acted as pivots to vertically aim the barrel. The blocks had ridges on the bottom that fit in grooves machined in the deck lugs so that they could slide fore and aft on the lugs without sideways motion. This allowed horizontal alignment of each barrel with its mount. The adjustment also perfectly aligned the barrel's two trunnions with one another so that they would smoothly rotate in their bearings without binding when the barrel was elevated. Once aligned, a steel shim was machined to snugly fit in any gap that remained between the trunnion block and deck lug after adjustment. The block and lug assembly was then clamped together with a bracket at the top and three more bolts were screwed into place to further lock them together. That horizontally aligned the gun in both its mount and the turret. But what about vertically? As described at the beginning, tramming blocks were installed as permanently set receptacles for a gauge called a tramming bar. One block was positioned on the gun slide facing down so that it moved up and down when the barrel was elevated. The other block was set on the gun pit bulkhead opposite the slide facing up. This was in a permanently fixed position. Once both blocks were properly spaced and aligned with one another using a tramming bar, they were welded into place. From then on, the tramming bar could be used as a gauge to confirm a barrel's vertical alignment with its mount in the turret. By the way, even though alignment could be easily checked by the ship's force, they were not allowed to make adjustments to correct any misalignments. That could only be accurately done by a properly equipped shipyard. Once adjusted, each barrel was in precise vertical and horizontal alignment within its mount and turret. 
Prior to being installed on the ship, the front roof and rear turret armor was removed and gun barrels slid out of their slides. The remaining turret structure was then light enough to be moved to a fitting dock where it could be lifted onto the ship and set on its previously installed turret rollers and roller path. Once in place, the gun barrels were reinstalled in their slides and armor bolted back into place. Alignment within the hull was always important, but not so critical with guns that were only locally aimed using optical gunner sights mounted adjacent to their gun barrel. The sights were mounted to the gun sleeves so that they always moved up and down and rotated with the barrel as it was elevated or trained. Much like a rifle with a telescopic sight, the primary concern for accurate aim was to align the sight with the barrel. Also like a rifle, it was done using a bore scope mounted in the barrel's breech that looked through the barrel so that the center of the bore could be matched with the sight when both were aimed at a distant target. Unfortunately, the guns were not normally aimed and fired locally. The guns were almost exclusively aimed using remote directors mounted at the top of the foremast, in the armored conning tower, and in the aft fire control tower. The director sent corrected target range and bearing information to the main battery plotting room where a computer called a range keeper calculated horizontal and vertical aiming angles for the guns. Gunners in the turrets then aimed their guns using the information displayed on pointer matching instruments without ever looking at the target. Accurately aiming the weapon was only possible if both directors and guns were precisely aligned with one another. Horizontal alignment was reasonably straightforward. Since turrets rotate on roller paths solidly bolted to the ship's structure, each turret could simply be turned until it was properly pointed and its position marked. This was done by moving the ship to an open area in calm waters with its bow pointed at a distant object. Turrets 1 and 2 were pointed at the same object and their positions marked at zero degrees of angle. The same procedure was done with turrets 3 and 4 by pointing the ship's stern at a distant object, positioning the turrets, and marking them at 180 degrees. Turret 3 was set by the ship and the turret being positioned at 90 degrees to an object and marked accordingly. The same procedure was also used to horizontally align each director. Once done, all turrets, guns, and directors were horizontally set with the ship and with each other. However, that did not mean that guns could be correctly aimed. Parallax error is created by the angle formed between a director and a gun caused by the space between them. Depending upon the aiming angle and range, this could result in errors of several hundred feet. Fortunately, the problem can be solved using basic geometry. A parallax range adjuster located in each turret was used to correct the error so that turret aim matched to the director. This addition completed the solution for accurate horizontal aiming. Vertical alignment presented its own set of issues. While each gun and turret was in perfect alignment with its roller path, the path had to be precisely level with the ship's structure to which it was attached. Likewise, each gun director had to be leveled with the same degree of precision. Distant aiming points were of little use for a variety of reasons. These included vertical distance between directors and turrets, the ship's inability to float perfectly level, and slight motion of the ship even in calm water. The only reliable solution was to create an artificial level based entirely within the ship called a reference plane. Since it always remained the same regardless of a ship's level in water, it served as uniform reference for all directors, guns, or anything else that must agree with one another. When they were all leveled using the same plane, all gun vertical aiming angles agreed with the director's sighting angles. Any variation such as parallax error could also be calculated and corrected. By the way, the same reference plane was also used when matching 3-inch, 5-inch, and 40mm guns with their remote directors. There was one more problem tangled up within the leveling solution that had to be addressed. Turret roller pads were leveled as best as possible when being installed on the ship's turret foundations. However, no ship's framing can be assembled accurately enough to assure a perfectly level gun platform and thus contributed to inaccuracy. Unfortunately, it could not be directly repaired, but there was a way to indirectly correct it. The gunner who controlled barrel elevation used a pointer when aiming. Its needle moved through a mechanical linkage that moved as the barrel was elevated. This photo shows a small box attached to the bottom of the mechanism whose label describes how to adjust the indicator to correct for roller path inclination or tilt. This compensated for tilt not by changing the tilt itself, but by changing the indicator's reading to offset it. With all solutions in place, the guns and directors were aligned with one another and roller path inclination was corrected, solving the problems of vertical aiming. 
So through careful design, construction, alignment, and correction, successful control of the system's complex geometry required for long-range gunnery was brought together and under control.